Okay, welcome back. Uh, so, with uh, the, all the background information that we covered in last, uh, say, last two weeks and uh, part of the uh, few modules of this particular week, now we will get into the LCA methodology. So, how we do life cycle analysis. So, you already had uh, good background on. We did cover some of the LCA concepts at the very beginning. Now we'll start getting into what LCA is, how it is done. So we'll recap some of the basic stuffs related to life cycle analysis and we'll start looking at some examples. So again, if you remember, we talked about this green and sustainability. That's how we started this course. That what is sustainability and what is what does it mean to be green? We define sustainability as the uh, use of resources today in a way, in a such such a way, so that our future generation can make use of resources. And uh, as you can see at the uh, like uh, this, uh, and and then what does it mean to be green? Green and uh, it is uh, green and sustainability, or you can say environmental friendly. These are all interchangeable terms, and you can use it uh, interchangeably. Like, uh, but why? In terms of sustainability, again, you see the same definition which we saw earlier. It's the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development. They come up with this sustainable development definition. Development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. So this is what the sustainability kind of how it is defined. And there are other ways that people talk about uh, environmental friendly, sustainable products, green products, environmentally preferable. So a lot of these things are used interchangeably in, as a kind of where we try to convey the meaning of sustainability. So there is a difference between sustainability and durability. Sustainability, something durable, it may be good for sustainability, but the sustainability does not mean durability. Durability is something different. So something biodegradable considered, yeah, maybe it's good, but we need to again find out whether it's really good. Uh, recyclable, ozone friendly, but uh, in terms of biodegradable and recyclable, recyclable especially, say if you have to end up using a lot of energy to recycle it, that may not be really sustainable. Then ozone friendly, we uh, it's a ozone friendly means we have a ozone hole on uh, on top, uh, so we we want to make sure that the it's a product that we have is ozone friendly, doesn't create climate change. Uh, and uh, those kind of problems. Eco design, eco design is again uh, where you have a more like environmental friendly design. And the last bullet over there is what is known as green washing. Green washing is where people claim things to be things to be green. People claim things to be environmental friendly, but they actually are not. So how will you find out whether things are environmental friendly or not? We can do that by doing this LCA exercise, which you will see example uh, pretty soon. So. Again, wh why we are worried about all these things? Uh, what can our Earth handle? That's uh, our Earth has a there is a capacity that our Earth can handle. Population, uh, its uh, annual growth. The population. This is a almost like a ten-year-old data. Right now, our population is more than seven billion, and uh, it's six point seven billion. They, we don't worry too much about the absolute number, but if you kind of compare. The low uh, income, uh, low income country, the lower developed countries, they have a nearly 5.4 billion out of 7, like 6.7 billion. So that's you are looking at almost uh, a like a 9, 70 to 80 percent population, or nearly 80 percent, 70 percent, more than 70 percent population of the world stays in low developed countries. So that's where, uh, and the medium developed countries around 1.2 billion, then US is around 300 million. So. And there is a, uh, in the medium developed countries where the, it's a, a rate of growth is also very low. At the low income countries, the rate of growth is higher and US is around 1%. So it's again, uh, population of the world is growing up, which we kind of talked about at the very beginning of the class uh, as well. As the population grow up, we have more people to feed, more people, more houses needs to be built for uh, the people around the world. Then there is a, Estimate that uh, Earth can maximum handle 13.4 billion people, and uh, we have we have to look at okay where we are headed. Like uh, we have to start looking at renewable energy source, because uh, we are. You remember from the earlier slide, earlier earlier uh, videos, we saw that uh, we use a lot of energy. Energy is needed. Energy, water, everything was related. So average per unit energy consumption is three kilowatt per person. That's the average uh, energy consumption. 
In US, they use this 12 watt, 12 kilowatt per person, and that includes all sorts of energy. Industrialized 7.5 kilowatt, Denmark is 5.1, developing countries is 1 kilowatt per person. So say if entire world is a start following the so-called US dream, where people want to be like big car, big houses, uh, after like a air conditioner, and all those kind of stuff uh, that requires a lot of energy. If the whole world starts thinking, uh, like having trying to have a lifestyle of, the, of uh, what the United States has, we'll probably need three or four of the Mother Earth to supply that much kind of resources. So to be, being all, all that, we kind of talked about that earlier as well. So what does that mean in terms of uh, science? Where, what does the science say? Green is trendy. Something green is, it's a, it's a fashionable. People feel good about that, that yes, it's a green, green product. So in, industry is also looking for ways to green their products and manufacturing process. Individual and families are looking to green their homes and lifestyles. There are so many websites these days out there which can help you to, to come up with your own carbon footprint, own environmental footprint on a day-to-day -day basis based on how you live, live. They can give you an environmental footprint and then you can modify your life, lifestyle and then you can reduce your environmental footprint as well. So that uh, can be done too. So how can you tell if something is really is green? So that's what, uh, how, how to find out if something is really green? Is it, uh, what is currently happening to achieve the goal? So to scientists, for that we, we perform a life cycle assessment. So that's what we do. As you can see within the picture over here, from the very, if you have from the supplier, Things goes to the transport, goes to manufacturing, to the packaging, then use, then it's disposed. So if you go from, from the raw material extraction only up to the packaging, that's called cradle to gate. Cradle to gate, including the four, includes four stages. So you have raw material acquisition, transported to manufacturing plant, manufacturing plant makes it, transported to the packaging and goes to the, uh, the malls and the super like a big uh, big size stores or the small size stores whatever based on where you are in the world and that's where the your it ends it that's, a, that's your cradle to gate that's not cradle to grave but cradle to gate cradle to grave that we talked about earlier is you go all the way up to the disposal you look at the use phase as well as the disposal phase and that's look at your cradle to grave uh, uh, where you can use it uh, in a cradle to grave concept so Life cycle assessment is a scientific way to look at going green. So when we say we are going green, this LCA is a scientific way of looking at going green. That's what, uh, that's what it's all about. So life cycle assessment, it's uh, what it does. It's a compilation and evaluation of input, output, and the potential environmental impact of a product system throughout its life cycle. So what does it mean? It's essentially, it's an accounting exercise. It's like an environmental accounting exercise. Like if you have done accounting, if you look at the banks, uh, any, any company's balance sheet, they will have how, what is the input coming into the company, how much money came in, how much money got expended, and where in, what are the under different heads. Similarly here, we are looking at, we are compiling and evaluating all the inputs and outputs and the potential environmental impact of any product or services. So that's another thing many times where you hear the concept having a systems thinking. So this is what a systems thinking is. Life cycle analysis is, helps you to have a systems thinking where you are thinking in a systems approach. So you establish an environmental profile of the system and then you come up, uh, then you come up with, a, uh, with, with the solution, like with you, you analyze it and find out, okay, what is, what are, what is the total uh, environmental footprint. So how you, there is a, since for any method, remember we talked about when we do the water, water analysis, wastewater analysis or the solid waste analysis for the environmental sample, we have a standard method. Similarly here, we have a method, as you can see in the green box on top, there is a ISO method for International Organization for Standardization, ensures that LC is completed in a certain way. So there is a ISO method, which you can also, if you Google ISO method for, uh, we will, I will give you a summary of ISO method as uh, probably later this week or early, early next week uh, in terms of uh, module. Uh, so you will see that ISO, uh, how the ISO method is employed here. But ISO method is in, again, it's a, it's a method so that, say if I'm doing an LCA here in India, 
or somebody is doing an LCA over in US or in Japan or wherever, we can compare each other's work. If we are looking at similar kind of uh, product, we can compare each other's work if we have followed a standard method. If a standard method of doing that an ISO is that a standard method. So what can be done with the LCA? What is why, why we should do LCA? It helps with the product and the project development and more improvement. So it helps you to make a product more green, more environmental friendly, same thing with your project and also improve, you improve your project and you can do for the strategic planning, you can plan. Say for example, uh, in recent past, uh, I was uh, involved with, uh, there is a uh, there is an area called Peel region in Ontario, Canada, where Ontario, there it's very close to uh, Toronto and there they were looking at it's uh, all together uh, three uh, towns around 2 million population so 20 lakhs not too big uh, from an Indian standard but pretty big from an Ontario standard so it's 20 million population they wanted to have a new design they want they were doing an integrated waste management uh, plan uh, where they want to look at for the different options out there which one seems to be more environmental friendly so for that uh, in terms of their plan they employed LCA method. So I was uh, the working on uh, the different options that the, that the, that the city, that re the Peel region came up with. I did the LCA on them to say, okay, out of these option A, B, C, and D, which one has the least uh, environmental footprint? So that's uh, those, uh, I helped them kind of make, make some judgment along that line. We didn't do the detailed LCA, we just did a quick LCA to find out uh, what, so that once their plan is, uh, so that helps in the strategic planning. So similarly, you can use it for the public policy making uh, in terms of environmental policy to find out whether if you're claiming certain things will be green, as I will give you one example of when you don't, like how this helps in the policy. Then uh, also marketing and eco declaration. Many, many, many places in the world today, people like uh, to buy green stuff. They want to use green stuff. So if you can also be used as a marketing tool, it can be used in the eco declaration tool. So those things uh, is also pretty handy. So this particular slide kind of gives you an idea of what is the product life cycle. So uh, when we talk about product life cycle, you are starting from say raw material acquisition. Uh, you, are, you are looking at the raw material acquisition. That's the very beginning. So if you are an engineering student, you take a kind of this is your mining friends. That's uh, your mining friends will help you mine all these materials. So when you go for raw material acquisition, you have uh, here, if you look at for each of these boxes, this is kind of the product life cycle stages and we'll go this, uh, I'll try to explain this to you one by one. So here, M and E is your material and energy input to the process and distribution. W is the waste. And that waste doesn't have to be always solid waste. It could be gas, it could be liquid or it could be solid. So it's basically the, uh, the waste that is coming out and there could, uh, there could be some output from the product processes or distribution as well. So the first box here is the raw material acquisition. Say if you want to make anything, even if you want to make a very small, uh, like if you want to build this pen. If you want to make this pen, for this pen also there are different, uh, the, we have a cap here, we have a uh, nib, and there are different types of plastics. And uh, if you go for uh, like a different types of material, many times they may ha also have a spring in there which will have metal, uh, and uh, you, you need some ink uh, there to write. So, Different, uh, types of different types of materials, different types of chemicals has gone into making it. So if you go back and look at this particular, uh, particular chart over here, the first one, the raw material acquisition, is where we look at, okay, what are the different materials that we need to make any product? So, and, uh, so that's, your, that's the that's part. So once the material has been acquired, it, will, it has to be processed. Say you look at your cell phone, you look at your smartphone, the smartphone, uh, most of the smartphone, they look cool because that's what their marketing uh, uh, marketing thing is that to make them look cool. But there are a lot of metals are there. There is a uh, lot of rare earth metals present. There is a plastic present. Many, many times it's a blended plastic. There could be some iron present. But the iron is not as an iron that you will see in an iron sheet. So they get processed. So if that's what is happening in the second box over here. So your material is getting processed where it is uh, ma making it to a form so that it can go to a product. So in the first you have a raw, raw material acquisition. So and this M and E in into the M and E which is the material energy input that comes into each one of these boxes. Then you have the material being processed. That's what your metallurgy, metallurgy friends or uh, your mechanical friends will help you do that as well. Then after material is processed, it will go to the manufacturer and assembly. Here again your uh, 
mostly mechanical, electrical, those uh, people will be involved. So, they will be, they will get manufactured and they will get assembled. And if you are talking about some mechanical devices, if you are talking about buildings and other stuff, your civil and architectural friends will help you with that. So, so that is uh, the manufacture and assembly. Again, uh, you will have some material and energy input. Then it will be used uh, and uh, during the use, there could be some service that is being provided, some repair, some maintenance, those things will be there. Once the use is gone, then it will go to retirement and recovery. And after retirement and recovery, uh, after uh, whatever you cannot be recovered, then it goes to treatment and finally to disposal. And so, all these steps is what is known as your product life cycle. So, here is your cradle at the very beginning of where you start acquiring the raw material to make the product and at the end is your grave when you put it into a disposal system. So, this is your cradle to grave product life cycle. So, that is how we define the cradle to grave product life cycle. You make sure that you understand this, you listen to this video again and again to make sure you get the concept of this product uh, uh, cradle to grave because we will be using this concept in subsequent uh, problems that we will be solving in this particular course. So, as part of this uh, step, there are certain, we, we have not talked about this aspect here, we'll, which we will do it right now. So, when you do the retirement and recovery, part of it you can bring it back and reuse it. If it is a reusable form, it can be repaired and we can reuse again. Part of it can be taken back if it is uh, not reusable, but the material from them can be reused. So, we can remanufacture. So, it can come back into the manufacture and assembly plan, where the things can be remanufactured into a new product. Then some of it can go back to the material processing, if we can, we can close loop recycle, that is called closed loop. Within the plant itself, we are recycling it. And, uh, and there could be some, which is an open loop recycle, where if you have say, uh, some laptops and other stuff, where your metals, glass and other stuff from the laptop can go to a material metal recycling plant or a glass recycling plant. So, that is how it gets managed. So, this is essentially your product life cycle. So, this is a very, very important slide uh, for you in this particular course. So, you be, uh, I would uh, encourage you to make sure that you have a very good understanding of all the different steps that goes into the life cycle of a product, because that is what we will be referring to many times during the course of this, uh, uh, of this uh, during the uh, course of this uh, like a 20 hour uh, course. So, once you understand that, uh, that product life cycle, what is in there, then you have to do the, if you want to do this LCA, there is a method of doing it. And this is uh, this four, there are four steps of doing the LCA. And these four steps again came from that ISO methodology, because uh, as, as I said earlier, we use a, a standard methods of doing LCA. So, one of the, what makes up LCA, we start with the goal and scope definition. So, you need to define what is a, what is an LCA, uh, like a, what is a, what, what is the purpose of LCA, who is the audience. So, if you want to make an LCA, for example, if you are running a company, if you are running a company, you produce certain products. So, one option you want to do an LCA exercise, life cycle assessment exercise is to find out, okay, what is the environmental footprint of your, car, of your product that you are producing. And the environmental footprint, one thing you can look at your process, and you can, uh, when in the process you see that, okay, process A, B, C, D, like in your process chain, you have unit process 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different unit processes are there. You can decide that, okay, out of these 4, 5 unit processes that I have, this particular unit 3, uh, unit process 3 is has a bigger environmental footprint. So, how come I go and improve this unit process 3? what I can do with this unit process 3. You can go and talk to your chemical engineers or all the process engineers, whoever is involved and say that this has a like a higher environmental footprint, how to reduce it. So, that could be one goal, where you are actually trying to improve your product. You are trying to make your product more environmental friendly, because there is already a market out there, where people want to have products, which is more environmental friendly, as opposed to a product, which is less environmental friendly, but not at a too much extra cost. Little bit of extra cost, say 5 to 10 percent, people may still may do it, uh, especially like upper middle class or some middle class people who are environmentally cautious, they may still go and buy something which is a slightly more costlier, if we can prove to it to them that it is more environmental friendly. And how we will prove them? Because then if we have a independent life cycle kind of a study done by a independent agency 
and then that satisfies that yes this product is better than the other products uh, or uh, comparable products so if you have to pay a, a additional 10 percent or even say 15 percent you may still get away with that but if the price is too much very difficult because uh, environment is great but at the same time people look at their parts first because if it's too costly then it becomes a difficult to sell those products but so that that could be one option of uh, what is the purpose of doing lca other option is you want to compare that you uh, you are making a uh, you are making a mobile say you uh, you are making one particular type of mobile and you want to go and check uh, what kind of other manufacturers are there with a similar type of configuration what is your environmental footprint as opposed to the other competitors environmental footprint and then you uh, come up you can you can market your product if it comes out to be better in terms of the environmental footprint as opposed to your competitor so some of the some of the clientele which are uh, which thinks green like who likes to have more uh, green product will be will be attracted towards your product so that's that could be another goal so that's we have to be in terms of uh, uh, like in terms of the methodology that we look at this in the goal and scope definition we need to have a very clear cut idea like what is the purpose of doing this lca and who the audience is because based on this what is the purpose and who is the audience we will we will define our life cycle assessment uh, exercise to to come up with information which can be used by those particular audience so uh, which you will see in uh, in the examples it will make you much clearer so once you have the goal and scope definition uh, the next uh, thing is uh, within that we'll talk about some more function and functional unit and all that. But one of the more the mo most critical aspect is this inventory analysis. This is the most critical part of doing a life cycle analysis because this inventory analysis is all data, 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 data. You need to have lots and lots of data. And uh, thankfully, these uh, once this LCA concept is started, we have now databases out there. Some databases are available uh, for free. Some databases you need to pay, uh, but uh, uh, it's, uh, there are databases available which you can use for uh, uh, finding the data. Again, uh, since uh, as you will see in any environmental scenario, uh, around the whenever the environmental initiative has been taken, most of the time these initiatives is started with Western European countries. Uh, LCA exercise is not different. Uh, LCA exercise did start from the Western European countries. So we have most of the good established databases actually comes from Western European country. But nonetheless, there, are, there is effort being made by uh, different companies. EcoInvent is one company which is very popular in terms of the databases. And right now, actually, we are working on a project with EcoInvent uh, to develop some databases for the Indian contest. So here, uh, Again, the EcoInvent is trying to get some data for the Indian contest or South Asian area, Southeast Asia, South Asia, different. They are looking at around the world and they are trying to develop some databases which, you, which can be incorporated. So, so inventory analysis is the data, data, data. So before you go to the data, one thing is that you need to find out what is the function and the functional unit. So function means for any product when you are trying to, because we are trying to calculate the environmental footprint of a product and the product has a certain function. Many times it gets very difficult to compare the two products. For example, if you look at an e-reader versus the regular book, our regular book, both uh, in regular book also you can read, you can read a novel, you can read a novel on your uh, Amazon Kindle, you can read a novel on your uh, iPad or you can read a novel on your uh, any uh, like a small uh, like a tablet e-reader but uh, how to compare them if you want to compare reading on a e-reader versus a book it's very difficult to compare all the function for both of them is to read uh, to read a book but and we'll talk about that how to make those kind of comparisons in this uh, in uh, in the subsequent module it's it, it gets tricky it gets tricky even for such a, such a such a simple stuff so that's uh, so but we need to assume a function so for example you are trying to look at a two different types of writing uh, you look, you look a uh, regular uh, fountain pen, ink pen versus this kind of pen, which is uh, your uh, lit pen, and even uh, some some of these uh, mechanical pencils versus your regular pencil. Mechanical pencil comes with a spring, so there are different. Both the both of them, the function is to write, but uh, how to like how how to quantify? So what is the functional unit? What is the how much should be the functional unit? So based on your function and the functional unit, we decide on in terms of the data collection. Then where the boundaries will be, where we will uh, uh, 
uh, keep our boundary, what would be the system boundary, and I'll give you examples of that where we will kind of uh, confine our uh, our study. And what data do you need? Based on your system boundary, you need to find out what kind of data is required, or what kind of data is required, uh, and what assumptions are you making? Because uh, when you go for the data collection, you, our industrial processes are not uh, designed in a way to for us to do LCA exercise. Uh, say if you want to get the data, for example, if you want to go to a power plant and you want to find out there are say n number of unit processes going on. So, for each of the unit processes you want to find out the material input, the energy input and the, and, uh, the output uh, emissions coming out. Some of the data you may have it, but for some of the data they may not have meter all the or after each of the unit processes. So, if they do not have the meter after each unit processes, you do not know how much energy is being consumed at each of the individual unit process. You may, you may get it for a combination of certain unit processes or for the whole plant, but to for the individual unit process it is very difficult to get because they are not designed in a way for us to, uh, to have to collect data. So, that sometimes we go and collect data, we try to have additional measurements to collect the data. Other, there are ways to make an assumption, ways to calculate certain things and that we will talk about that as well. So, there will be certain assumptions that you have to make because unfortunately, that is how the situation uh, will be. And then there will be certain limitations because uh, you may not always have all the data. Some of the data could be based on the theoretical values. So, you may have to use theoretical calculations to come up with some data. So, that is how the inventory analysis is done. So, inventory analysis as I said is one of the most critical part in terms of uh, in, in terms of your LCA. Once uh, this is the most time consuming stuff. So, LCI in terms of the data is what we get it from the databases, uh, but we need to make sure we knew we use the correct database. So, once you have the database, once you have the LCI data, then uh, the last two uh, bullets if you go back and look at that, it said one is the impact assessment. So, what are the environmental, social and economic effects that we see? Uh, we will talk mostly about environmental and we will not, uh, we will touch social and economic a little bit, but uh, what are the environmental effects? So, there are different criteria we look at uh, in terms of the environmental emissions that is having the effect. And then we have to interpret, what are the interpretation? How to reduce the environmental impact? What is the so, if our goal is to reduce the environmental impact, how to do that? What conclusions can you draw from this study? What did we learn from this particular study? What recommendations can be made? So, those are uh, in terms of uh, different uh, like a, uh, stuff that is uh, used. So, again in terms of this is this particular slide gives you a very brief overview of, uh, of the uh, uh, like a different how the LCA is done. Uh, as per the ISO methodology, we need these are the four steps, goal and scope, inventory analysis, impact assessment and interpretation. And we will come to this one of all of these in detail as we look at several examples starting in the next module. So, in this slide, in this particular module, if you remember what, what did we cover? We looked at uh, how the environmental, uh, like uh, how the LCA is performed. So, we started with a very brief overview of the basic sustainability parameter. We have kind of a recap of what we covered in the first uh, week, a quick recap of that and then we started looking into what is an LCA. We described in great detail the product life cycle stages. So, again I will I have already said many times, but I will say it one more time. Make sure you understand that particular slide, which is the slide just before it. You make a good understanding of this particular slide, because this is a very critical uh, slide for our uh, when we go into the next uh, modules and next week, because we, this is if you have understanding of this, the others will become easier for you to understand, because we will be referring to this life cycle. We will again be saying product life cycle, product life cycle. So, you should have a good understanding of what a product life cycle is all about. So, with that, uh, let us uh, uh, close this module and then uh, from the next module, uh, we will kind of start with an example of when we try to compare certain uh, products for LCA and uh, how, how we go about that, what are the steps, how we do this resource acquisition, how we collect this LCI data and what are the interpretation, what is the impact assessment mean, what are those environmental impact we are talking about and what how we can interpret the values. So, again thank you uh, for uh, watching uh, this uh, video and keep watching and I hope you will learn some good stuff from this course. Thank you.